Hello, my name is Kristen Campbell and the topic I have chosen is postpartum depression. Postpartum depression is one of the most common medical conditions that can happen during or after pregnancy, but can be challenging to recognize. I chose this topic because I find myself to be passionate about mental health and the fact that people should not feel bad for admitting they need help and shouldn't feel shame for seeking out that help. The problem new and expectant mothers face is lack of awareness and understanding. As a society, we've decided that motherhood is supposed to be hard, and you are supposed to feel overwhelmed, when that should not be the case. Now picture a world where mothers are properly informed and educated on all aspects of maternal mental health. Kaleidoscope Co. is the brand I created to give mothers a group they feel comfortable to open up to. With warm, neutral colors, a meaningful brand name, and an organic logo, I've made a soft, encouraging, and welcoming brand. The logo imagery consists of two butterfly wings with a woman's face incorporated into the figure ground. Something you may not know is that a group of butterflies is referred to as a kaleidoscope, which is why I've chosen it as my brand name, to remind women who may struggle with PPD that they are not alone in their struggles, and more people than they may know struggle with PPD or other postpartum mood and anxiety disorders. I've incorporated the branding into a brochure with the intention that they would be placed in a doctor's office. The brochure uses the warm color palette and soft organic shapes, along with butterfly illustrations, creating a friendly look that will invite the viewer to pick it up. The brochure highlights what PPD is, risk factors associated with PPD, possible treatments, and some resources in Charlotte. Through my interviews with professionals in the maternal mental health field, I learned that most women are not routinely screened for PPD when they go in for prenatal checkups. I also learned that most women don't even know the first thing about PPD until they're diagnosed with it. So it was important for me to design a takeaway that would teach people about this common medical condition. I created posters with the same intention that they would be hung in doctor's offices. The infographic displays common statistics and uses the brand's warm colors, soft organic shapes, and large legible type to create a sociable feeling, making the viewer more inclined to go and look at the information. The second poster has an eye-catching photo and uplifting quote that has the viewer's well-being in mind. Both encourage the viewer to put themselves first and reach out for help if and when they need it. The final part of my project is an Instagram account. Following the branding designed for Kaleidoscope Co., I've created an aesthetic feed that shares photos and more information about PPD, like statistics and how Kaleidoscope Co. can help the viewer. Since young adults are more tech savvy and are getting married and having children, Instagram is a great way to reach and educate that demographic. This project should leave you educated on postpartum depression and how you may be able to help the mothers in your life who may be struggling. These are also easily shareable educational pieces to give to others. This group of work should persuade the viewer to reach out for help and let them know that they are not alone. It is my hope that these women who experience PPD feel comforted and validated in their experiences, and they shouldn't feel ashamed for those experiences. Thank you. The first woman to be CEO of IBM once said, your value will be not what you know, it will be what you share. My name is Jillian Freeman, and I chose to create an organization for women business owners that creates community, encourages positive change, and allows women to share their stories in a welcoming environment. Women in business have made significant progress towards equality, but there are still areas that require improvement that I wanted to highlight with a new brand, Leading Ladies. The goal for Leading Ladies is to provide a feeling of belonging and allows women to embrace their femininity in the business world. So often the word lady becomes an attempt to belittle a woman, so I chose to redefine the term and make it a positive. The logo, color palette, and creative elements of the brand illustrate a warm, rich space, giving the women a break from the cold corporate imagery they might be used to. And what better way in 2020 to create community than on social media? Since Instagram is an image-based platform, I chose to collect and edit photography that represents the brand well and can include a wide range of diverse women. Adding really simple brand elements like the triangles and logotype headlines create a holistic feeling that allows the brand to become recognizable on a viewer's feed. A few animations sprinkled in there provides even more visual interest to the page. 
So to carry the brand further, I envisioned an event for businesswomen to come together to network, exchange encouragement, and learn new skills. I created a schedule of events and made a brochure that each woman would receive. I decided to use one of the brand's more secondary colors, gold, to make the event stand out from the rest of the branding elements. I carried this idea over to the event signage to show how it could translate to large-scale products. It was important for me to show how the brand I created could be a, applied to a variety of items, such as signage or even apparel and accessories like these. With these, women can show their confidence about being a business owner or their aspirations to become one. I designed items that not only I would like, but a wide range of women would too. Instead of making an overly feminine aesthetic, I decided to keep it slightly more neutral to appeal to even a wider audience. But the part of this project that really brought it all together for me was the website design. I was nervous about my ability to make a cohesive design that still had enough variety to keep the audience interested, but using color and triangle patterns, I achieved this goal. The triangle pattern I chose is more than just a visually appealing addition. I chose it because the shape is easily built upon, much like the progress that women in business have made in the last century. I designed the leading ladies to encourage women to add their own metaphorical triangle to this history. It's a brand for the confident, the eager businesswoman that wants to continue this progress towards gender equal opportunity and crushing gender stereotypes in the business world. Thank you. Hi, my name is Isabella Galliardo and for my topic, I chose youth homelessness. There are numerous problems that homeless individuals face, and when you think about homeless youths, you have to think about the issues that impact them specifically. On top of having to worry about where they are going to sleep and when their next meal will be, they are having to worry about schoolwork at the same time. They may be homeless because of trauma in their household, and they are more likely to experience even more trauma while being homeless. Depression and anxiety are extremely prevalent among homeless youth, and they are more likely to engage in high-risk behaviors leading to even worse complications. When approaching the design aspect of this project, I wanted to portray this topic in a way that showcased its seriousness and grabbed the viewer's attention, but I also wanted to approach it in a way that didn't scare away or sensationalize the content. I started with a series of posters that are intended to catch the viewer's attention with heart-wrenching headlines and statistics, while also using illustrations to relate to the youthfulness aspect and create a design that is a little more lighthearted. The red, black, and dark blue color palette enhance the heavy subject matter throughout all of the projects. All of these posters touch on a sensitive subject that this community has to deal with that the typical youth community may not even think about. Things such as shelter, food, and schooling. The next piece was an infographic flyer that utilized all of the same design elements as the posters, but introduced new information and statistics about the homeless youth community, as well as a guide and resources on how we can help out. This is intended to further educate while still tapping into the viewer's emotions. The audience should leave with a feeling of compassion and understanding about the gravity of these situations. The last thing I'm about to show is an animation that combines the statistics from the infographic along with the emotional pool of the posters. I ended it with quotes from interviews I conducted from experts who spend their days interacting with this community. I felt it was important to incorporate their statements to further reiterate why this is an issue from the mouths of individuals that have seen it firsthand.
I hope after viewing this, you feel upset and angry about the situation these youths have been put into and sympathetic towards this community. And in turn, I hope it motivates you to take action to help this community in any way that you can. Thank you. Hi, my name is Daniel, and the community I want you to remember today is the environmental cleaning volunteers in the Charlotte and surrounding areas. From the start, I wanted to highlight a community that was important to me and indirectly important to the majority of the Charlotte metropolitan area. I was eager to highlight the people of our area that put forth the effort to keep our surroundings clean. Charlotte Clean Trails is the brand name I chose to represent this community. Creating an image for the entirety of this community would be tough, but I decided to focus more on the trails aspect and the streams that bind the two together. Developing a successful brand to bring the community to light was the best solution I found. Using a warm palette, imagery of nature, and videography, I was able to capture the essence of this subject and the community. As we live our lives, it is important to remember what surrounds us. What we can do to volunteer and make the difference is the biggest part of the message. We have to take care of our environment, and those who volunteer know that and need the help of everyone in our community. My mission to bring light to this community and grab the attention of future volunteers starts with an infographic poster. The goal is to get people informed about the scarcity of volunteers in our area. Ranging from the foothills to the UR, there is a lot of land and water to cover, and I wanted that to be the main focus point on getting the attention of viewers. The next step in getting that next person involved is an ad campaign for websites and social media. While making these ads, I wanted a lot of variants for banners, posts, and made the message to be catchy and clear. I decided it was important to source my own photos for this, so I took to some trails in the foothills and was able to capture just what was needed to show the beauty around us that needs preservation. For my final solution, I really wanted to get the viewer's attention. I wanted them to feel what the message was, not just read it. Look around you. What do you see? Home? Work? Walls? No. Look around you. What do you see? The trees, streams, forests, and leaves. Make a difference. Protect our trails. Protect our waters. Volunteer. Putting this video together not only shows what the community finds important, but also puts me back in the perspective of the volunteer when they look around at the sites they clean and preserve. I took the time to go to some local trails and greenways to capture what you see on your hikes, walks, and outings. I reached out professional talent for voice and was able to utilize royalty-free music to create this lasting impression. The message is clear, the community needs our help, and we need to be the ones that answer their call for volunteers. Hello, my name is Lindsay Riggs, and I created an ad campaign for Time Out Youth, an LGBTQ youth center here in Charlotte, North Carolina. While we have made great strides in the LGBT community, there are still obstacles and prejudice, and even more so when it comes to the children and teens of the community. Many LGBT youth suffer from high levels of stress, anxiety, and rejection, feeling unsafe in their schools and sometimes even their own homes. All of these factors make for much higher rates in homelessness and suicide attempts than in those of their heterosexual peers. That's why local LGBTQ youth centers like Time Out Youth are so important in making a safe space for this community. Time Out Youth Center offers support, education, and opportunities for personal development while integrating with other LGBTQ youth. I created the following campaign that is not only informative, but celebrates this beautiful community. I started out by designing a poster campaign that would be displayed in hallways of middle and high schools. This poster campaign was designed to be attention-grabbing, welcoming, and informative, but not overloaded with information. The first poster is a simple statement encouraging the viewer to come to Time Out Youth to find their community. With hands, hands raised high 
Each hand represents a different flag that stands for each identity of the LGBTQ community. The question posed, where's your rainbow? Ask the view viewer which hand represents them and that all are welcome here. Poster number two shows different youths that have visited Time Out Youth and different services that were available to them. As the tagline suggests, all these services are offered to them under the rainbow. Poster number three lists the different programs that Time Out Youth offers. Each poster is designed to be fun and inviting while dealing with serious subject matter without having to alienate the viewer. Moving on to a brochure that I created that would be available in guidance counselor offices. This brochure offers more information on Time Out Youth, such as an About Us page, contact information, programs offered, and why we matter. Designed in the youthful color palette I have chosen, it ties together elements that were used in previous poster designs, and the overall tone of the brochure, much like the rest of the campaign, is fun and celebratory. Lastly, I designed a social media campaign for Instagram. This campaign features different youths that have visited Time Out Youth with correlated quotes that I collected from interviews with LGBTQ teens that have been regulars at Time Out Youth. This campaign features playful yet proud icons that represent each teen's personality. It is important that we support and protect our LGBTQ youth but also allow them the freedom and space to be teens. That is the goal of this campaign. Support, educate, celebrate. Thank you. Hello, my name is Tulsi Patel and I'm doing my thesis project on child marriages. Child marriages have existed for many years. It's a topic that was heavily practiced in the Eastern parts of the globe. It wasn't until I started researching deeper that I discovered the problem was deeply rooted within North Carolina as well. Currently, North Carolina's minimum age marriage is 14. This is because of a loophole within the legal system commonly known as the pregnancy exception. As I dug deeper, I uncovered that North Carolina has become a destination location for child marriages due to this loophole. An instance of this is shown through a 17-year-old girl and a 49-year-old man from Kentucky. They visited Drury Singers, who is also known as the Register of Deeds office, requesting marriage license. It was said they had read online that North Carolina allowed such marriages, unlike their own state, who had restricted marriage laws. Not many people know about this issue, or many people also pass it on as a third world problem. Through my designs, I wanted to bring awareness and change to this ongoing topic. Beginning my design stage, I planned out a three-step idea, inform, promote, and change. The first step would be to make flyers with data to inform the audience. Next would be posters to promote the information, as well as lead into the next step, which would be change. To further aid the last step, a petition would be created. As I first started making my designs, I focused on a color palette before anything else. I ended with these pastel colors. The colors almost represent the innocence of a child who are the subject of the topic. It was important to focus on the aspects of a child and what impacts them. In order to complete this focus, I added small childlike aesthetics through all my pieces of design. Starting with the child playing blocks and toys and ending with the small footprints. It is said even the smallest event leaves an impact, imprint on a child. So the footprints became a sort of symbol of a child walking through the design and in the end fading out as more people became aware of the situation and joined the fight to end it. Adding to both the seriousness of the topic but also a childlike aesthetic, I included a type of terror effect within my posters, both representing the ripping impact these events cause on a child as well as the playful destruction some children can cause, such as drawing on walls or ripping paper. Within the ripping effect, I added photos of children of various ages to also create a dynamic view. Finally, in order to tie the, in order to tie the design together and lead into the next set of design, I devised a plan of action and started a petition for change. Once the viewer is done and informed, they can use the link or the QR code and join the ongoing fight as the last design is a postcard of some sort 
they are also able to pass around this and share it to the world. Child marriages as a whole may not be able to end all at once, but can be tackled one footprint at a time. Together, let's erase these footprints of the past and imprint new better ones for the future. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Jenny and I have chosen the topic of veganism. Don't let the word vegan scare you off because I'm in fact not vegan. I began this project with the curiosity of why vegans are so passionate about their lifestyle. I knew that eating meat affected the environment, but I didn't realize how much. I was the type of person who ate meat for almost every meal. I had the out of sight, out of mind attitude. But you see, I never educated myself on the daily choices I was making with food. Throughout this project, I found that our everyday meals are affecting the human race. Meat consumption is affecting the environment. As the demand for meat rises, so does the number of cattle. This is leading to millions of acres of untouched land being destroyed. Imagine all the fossil fuels that are used with farming equipment and transportation of the animals and the livestock are producing a significant amount of methane. Given that our daily meals have such an impact, you might be asking, are there ways that I can help without fully going vegan? Well, consider reducing your meat consumption. Think about making meat your side dish. Choose chicken instead of a steak or burger and participate in activities like Meatless Mondays. I developed a brand for the community called In The Roots. As humans, we are absorbing information and applying it to our everyday lives, kind of like the roots of a plant. The purpose of this brand is to inform the community about the environmental impact meat consumption has and the route that can be taken to reduce our intake. I would describe this brand as tasteful, enduring, dainty, and refreshing. I would describe the color palette as vibrant and natural. I chose greens to symbolize growth in ourselves and the environment, along with warm colors to express strength and excitement. It's important for my designs to have a cohesive aesthetic. I enjoy combining color palettes and photography to create a feeling or emotion. This is why I chose to create social media materials to display the two mediums side by side. I experimented with photography by setting the scene to shoot veggies and fruits. I wanted to communicate clean eating in a delightful, satisfying way. I went to the Lazy Five Ranch and had an adorable interaction with a Scottish Highland cow. I also experimented with a series of animations and chose to present them through Instagram stories. I added GIF features throughout my series to capture the viewer's attention. Design has the power to persuade our decision making. With the facts I've learned, testimonials from vegans, and the designs I've created for this project, I have now altered the way I see myself and the world around me. I have gradually been cutting out meat and trying new alternatives within my diet, something I thought I would never do. So if you're also curious, do your own research, take the process slow, and deeply consider the impact you can make by simply skipping one burger. Thank you. Okay. How's everyone doing tonight? Which is a rhetorical question since this is a recording. Anyway, I'm Jake and I love reading. Uh, before I got into novels, I used to read a lot of comics, and I still read a lot of comics, but you get the idea. So when we first started talking about project topics and comic censorship came up, I latched onto it pretty much right away. Uh, I was surprised that I hadn't heard anything about it before. I I'd had a more nebulous concept that, yeah, censorship is a thing, it's always been a thing. But after looking into it and doing research, I found that pretty much since the start of popular publishing, this has been a huge problem. Uh, for instance, Lady Chatterley's Lover, one of the first popular novels written uh, in the early 1900s, was banned for decades because of obscenity, which for today's standards would be laughable, uh, but also because it was about a woman having an affair and it didn't have a tragic ending, which seems kind of insane. Um, it's not just books either. Movies, music, and even people themselves are still getting censored or even canceled today. 
Uh, so I talked to librarians and comic shop owners to kind of get their views on the subject, and I decided to make a campaign or toolkit that could be adapted for anyone wanting this message to get out there, since that seemed to be the main issue for me. I created an infographic. Posters. and animations that can be used for web or turned into physical takeaway materials. The beauty of my concept is its adaptability. Uh, by choosing watershed moments of censorship in history as the topic for the posters and adding a short tagline, I chose kind of an ironic tone for a little bit of humor. They can be altered to fit any situation or even more can be created. Do you want to focus on film, music? It's easy. Short message, eye-catching visuals, and the unifying tagline are all you need. It's the same with the animations. The components aren't complex, so even with very little knowledge of Adobe, they can be edited to fit anyone's needs with very little instruction. That way, whoever wants to get the message out there can get a customized package for whatever they need. I've had a lot of experience with helping people not used to the design space realize just how easy it can be to communicate their ideas with a little bit of effort and a little bit of knowledge. And I wanted to kind of lean into that to create something user friendly that would help anyone get the word out that wanted to get the word out. Thanks for your time. Hello, my name is Kira Kinney and I created a campaign about women in sports. Two years ago, I decided to take my creative career to the sports industry. And although one of the best decisions I've ever made, my internship also brought light to the challenges women working in sports face daily. It's necessary to say that I am lucky to be part of a program that prides itself on inclusivity, diversity, and equal opportunity. However, inevitably, with the stigmas that have been established in modern culture, even the most accepting athletic programs are not free from sex discrimination. I often wondered about other women's experiences and if what I had been warned about and experienced myself was common. I wanted to find the fact behind the feeling. It did not take but a few minutes of research to conclude that claims of sex discrimination within the sports industry are valid and so were my concerns. As I said, I knew there was something wrong, but I would have never guessed the extent of it, especially because of my program being an exception. I learned just how prominent sex discrimination was in the sports industry, and the numbers were nothing short of alarming. The most valuable information I obtained was what to attribute the discrimination to. This is one, access and opportunity, two, Title IX awareness, education and compliance, three, mental health and physical health and safety, four, leadership, pay equity and workplace bias, and lastly, five, media coverage. After establishing these five core issues, a resolution seemed possible, hence the further need I felt to educate others. Rather than interviews, I considered the conversations I had with my participants as just that, conversations. These conversations provided authenticity, power, emotion, comfort, and a better understanding of the situation. It was reassuring to know I was bringing topics that were important to them to light. I would like to think that equality among all is a common goal. And one of the biggest things preventing that goal is a lack of awareness and education on certain problems. My campaign is all based around educating others on the issues women in sports face in order to spark the emotions and action necessary to ignite change. I wanna celebrate how far we have come, but persuade the necessary feeling of frustration and determination. With stated facts, personal testimonies and history all visually available, I am sure that no matter your background, you will empathize with the affected community. Here I have an interactive timeline that um, celebrates where we have gone so far in terms of women in sports. Uh, these are a few screenshots. However, this is the video and you're also welcome to scroll through at that link at the bottom.
so that's the video and like i said i i thoroughly encourage you to click the link below that way you can scroll through and um despite covid you'll still get that interactive feeling that i wanted in the gallery um i know we all appreciate uh you coming to the 2020 zoom out and thank you so much for your time hi my name is april lynn and i chose to generate my thesis around daca now most of you have probably heard of DACA or may even have strong opinions about the policies surrounding it, but a lot of us don't know the basic struggles that many of these dreamers go through or even the impact they have on the community. DACA, also known as Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, allows certain individuals access to stay in the United States for a renewable two-year period. Someone like myself who has friends that are dreamers didn't really understand how significantly more difficult it was for them. Throughout my interviews, I discovered how rigorous and expensive the application process is, as well as the constant obstacles afterwards like getting a driver's license or getting help from government-related services. Applying to these services may seem like a nuisance for us, but for them, it's a barrier. Another privilege we have as citizens are federal benefits such as financial aid or food stamps. Dreamers aren't allowed these benefits. This is extremely important to note since many of these dreamers are attending college without the help of financial aid, and yet 72% of these dreamers are, who are currently in college are pursuing a BA or higher. What I found most shocking during my conversations is that many states require dreamers to pay out-of-state tuition even if they are residents and sometimes even have to pay the international student tuition fee just to attend out-of-state colleges. There's a stigma around illegal immigrants being dangerous or stealing jobs, but the numbers show a very different reality. Many of these families don't want to leave their homes, but they do it to protect their loved ones and search for a place that will provide safety and opportunity. And although DACA was a good start for many people and provided an opportunity for them to obtain real jobs, it does not provide a pathway to citizenship. And for this, I want my brand, United Dreams, to provide resources for those who want to educate themselves and to get people to take action. And so it's important for my logo to represent people striving together for a better future and for their dreams. Around my research, I found several sites targeted towards dreamers and illegal immigrants. And although some provided educational resources, there weren't many. And with this, I knew that I needed to create a website that could provide fact sheets, actionable resources, shareable resources, updates about policy change, and many more. I also carried this to the Instagram feed where the post can be easily shared on their stories or sent to friends and family. And during my design process, I wanted to include the interviews along with an image of the individual. But I knew many dreamers were uncomfortable with sharing their identity. So I came up with a solution to create silhouettes while keeping them in their environment. And this helps me protect their identity as an individual, but also gives context to what they do and provide to the community, which can also help eliminate stigmas. My hope is to one day see the DREAM Act, a bill that grants legal status to DACA recipients to pass in the legislation. But for now, I hope that we can all take the time to invest in our communities and help create a platform for DREAMers to strive. Thank you.